fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hi-Yo Silver, the Lone Ranger. his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the Silver Mine! In the mountainous part of the Indian Territory, north of Texas, three men leaned on long-handled shovels and watched the approach of an Indian on a powerful paint horse. Take a good look, Darcy. Make sure that's the same redskin you thought it was. That's the one. I tell you, Bates, I know Tonto. I've seen him plenty of times. How about the horse? That's his horse, too. Hold on now, Darcy. You say you know the Lone Ranger's friend. You've seen him? Well, sure, frequent. Does he know you? No, of course not. When that mask man's around, I don't turn a limelight on myself. Darcy, I hope you got a good scheme. Sure I have. I'm dead sure the Lone Ranger's got some place around here where he gets silver for his bullets and horses' shoes. All we gotta do is make him tell where it is. Darcy was right in what he'd heard about the Redskin riding ahead and coming this way. I'm always right. I'll start talking to Tonto and then grab him sudden. Drag him off his horse and make the Lone Ranger pay for his life. Just like that. Engine's coming near. Get ready. Yeah, he ain't riding hard. Hey, jab the ground with your shovels, boys. <clears throat> Gotta make it look like we're doing some work. Come yeah. on. Yeah. <clears throat> Good idea. You think the Lone Ranger's come back to this territory with the Redskin? Sure he has. He's been away a long time. <clears throat> He'll be back. I tell you, Bates, he's got to come back. Ain't no other way about it. I'd be willing to stake my life on his coming back to these parts. I hope you know what you're talking about. Uh, steady now. Let me talk to the Redskin. Go ahead. Hi there, Injun. Oh, Scout, oh, fella, oh, oh, fella. Call the horse Scout. It's the right one, no mistake about it. You traveling far? Oh, maybe plenty long way. Maybe travel two year, five year. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Say, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a few extra cartridges you could lend three prospectors, would you? Oh, we got them in saddlebag. You want them? Yeah, we're plumb out. Use our last cartridges to blow the head off a rattler. You traveling alone, Injun? Oh, uh, you see anyone with me? Nope, I reckon we don't. I guess your cartridges will fit one of our shooting irons. Save us a trip into Southpaw for more. Man, don't dast be without some protection in a place like this. Yeah. You dig for gold? Uh, we heard there was gold all around here. Ah. Uh, uh, here, cartridge. Oh, thanks. Hey, let go of my wrist. You stand still. Why, you out? Hands up. You will not touch gun. I'll show you. Hey! Uh, I'm just warning. Now you will uh, leave gun alone. Let go of my wrist. You're going to bust it. Uh, why are you here? I told you, we're prospectors. You lie. Now you see here, you're on your right. Uh, we all... Fellow who dig, got tough hand. You got no blister. <laughs> Me look at gun. Hey, Bates, Harv, do something. He's going to unhinge my hand. Ah, 
You got cartridge and gun. Me throw it over yonder. Me throw with you. Hey. Me take your gun, too. Mine ain't got bullets. I just... Throw it away. And you next. No, sir. We didn't mean to lie. We just started prospecting. Uh, me take gun. And then you not shoot me in back. Don't toss my gun away. Them rocks will smash it. <laughs> that good. Uh, now, steady, scout, steady. Get him up, scout. That muscle-bound redskin. I'll get square. My hand, look. It's white from how he grabbed my wrist. You fat-headed fool, Darcy. Why'd you hold it palm up and let him see it? He knew right off you didn't do hard work. Well, you saw how he held them cartridges. I had to hold my hand out. Now he's smarting up to us. He'll be on guard. Sure he will. He's gone back to report to the Lone Ranger. I'll let him. We'll nail both of them next time they come down this trail. You leave it to me. Lone Ranger and his 14-year-old nephew, Dan Reed, were in camp busy with an odd task. I helped shoe horses when I lived with Graham. You've been a big help here, Dan. <laughs> I never used solid silver horseshoes. They're not really pure silver. They're harder than that. Golly, they're pretty badly worn. Yes, I know it. That's one of the reasons we've taken the last two days of travel slower than usual. I used the last of our shoes some time ago. Yeah, I remember. There. Steady, boy. I guess we'll manage the rest of the trip now. Are, are you really going to show me your silver mine? Why, of course, Dan. Why not? <laughs> hey. What's the matter? <laughs> oh, nothing. Why shouldn't you see the silver mine? Well, I, I don't know. It, it seems like one of your biggest secrets. Dan, there'll be no secrets from you. Well, how am I doing with the writing? Oh, you're improving. The uh, real test will come soon after we leave the silver mine. The real test? Yes, along with the surprise I have for you. Steady, Silver, Sestato. Oh, but look at him come. He's not wasting any time. Come on, Scott. Hold it. Oh, Scott, oh, fella, oh. Oh, fella, oh. Steady. Tato has something to say. Uh-uh. Three fellas on trail. Say them prospectors. But that lie. Who are they, Kimosabe? Tonto not know. Hands soft and inside. Fellas never work. This is a country where honest men have to work. Oh, but fellas tell lie. Got bad eye, too. Maybe make trouble. How far from here? At Mountain Gap. A gap, huh? I see. What's the matter? Is that bad news? Dan, the gap is the one place we must go through to reach the Silver King. The mine? Yes. Golly, maybe they'll ambush us there. How did you leave them, Toto? Plenty man. Me take gun. Me plenty fast. Them fellas not friendly now. You... You got shoes on silver fix? Dan and I refitted the shoes, but we've got to have new ones. We can't go on to Mustang Mags until we get them. Oh, that's right. Um, maybe leave Dan here? Oh. Oh, no, Kimosabe. Oh, good. Dan has to stay with us. Those men must have learned that we were heading this way. Oh, that's right. Tato, there's only one place they could have gotten that information. The last town we went through. Oh. Southpaw? Yes. You identified yourself to the sheriff. Jim Pendleton, remember? I'm going to identify myself again. Otto, stay here with Dan. I'll be back. Uh, you go to Southpaw? Yes, and I might not be back till sundown. Said a big fella. Come on, Silver. Jiminy, this makes me feel like a toad. <laughs> What's the matter, Dan? Oh, Toddy, you know why he's going to Southpaw. He's going to get the law to help us through the gap. And if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't do that. Take you and the two of you to rip through there and defy those crooks to try and get you. He just wants to be sure I'm not in danger. <laughs> Ranger not ride silver hard now. Not till him get new shoes. Then then he isn't going to call the law in on my account? Oh, you not worry about that, Dan. I'd hate to think I was interfering with you and the Lone Ranger. You not interfere, Dan. You make Lone Ranger plenty happy. Say, I noticed today he laughed just a little bit. Uh, he doesn't do that very often. Uh, you make Lone Ranger plenty happy. Lone Ranger count on you for big things in future. Well, I won't let him down. Not if I can help it. And, Tonto, while we've got the chance, show me some more about building a shelter. <laughs> Never had a chance to learn that. Ah, we got afternoon ahead of us. Time to show you. You come. Fetch axe. Mid-afternoon found Pendleton, the sheriff, dozing in his office chair with flies buzzing in the still hot air of the small room. Then suddenly the silence snapped. Sheriff Pendleton? No. Nope. Oh, great day to you. You still in town? I've come back. Back? Well, you did leave as you planned, but you come back, is that it? What's wrong? Where are your friends? Waiting for me. Sheriff, someone in town talked about my trip. Three men are blocking the trail. Yeah? Well, they'll send deputies with you. No, that won't help. Why not? The three would hide, then follow me. 
And I don't want to be followed. Well, maybe we could arrest him. For what? They haven't done anything. Yeah, that's so. You got an idea? Yeah, Sheriff. Well, speak up, then. By right, Juniper, you can count on me to help in any way I can. Well, I thought I could. Hang it all, I don't know why you should trust me. Looks like I'm the one to spill the news about who you were. You didn't tell anyone else but me, did you? Now, these walls are thin. I might have been overheard. You just tell me what you want. You have a deputy named Marsh, a young fellow. Yeah, that's right, a husky one, too. I told you about him. He's got an eye that I don't like in spite of the fact he's been a good deputy. Yet you trust him. Well, I've got to. Besides, my daughter thinks he's all right. Uh, hang it all, I wish she didn't feel that way about him. You're about my size, Sheriff. The deputy is nearly as large. Your daughter is just about the same size as my friend Dan. Yeah, what about it? If you three would dress in clothes to resemble the three of us and uh, ride through the gap... Oh, I get it. Then those crooks will stop us thinking we're you. I'd like to have them think that. And if they tried to capture us or something, we'd have evidence to jail them. I doubt if they'll capture you. They want to know where you're going, is that it? Yes. And then if they don't make a play of any sort, they'll just follow us and get led astray. What do you think of the plan? It sounds all right to me. Hmm? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, sounds first rate. Don't see nothing wrong with it. While those schemers are following the three of us, you'll be able to go right through the gap. You better wait some time before you start. It'll be better if you plan to leave around midnight. That'll take you through the gap just before dawn. Yeah, that's a long time to wait around. It'll be the best time. I can count on you. You know doggone well you can count on me. I'll do it. Can you manage to find the right clothes? Why, sure. My daughter June will help me get those things fixed just so. I'll take a paint horse like Tondo's and a gray. In the dark, the gray will come close enough to look like yours. My girl's got a small Mustang like the one the kid rides. I'll go right away and get started in the plans. <laughs> As the evening advanced, the sheriff's daughter became increasingly enthusiastic about the unusual trip through the mountains. For the life of me, I can't understand why Marsh doesn't like the idea. Yeah, there's no figure in his likes and dislikes. How's the engine outfit working out? Oh, I'll be finished in a few minutes. I just have to hem the jacket. <laughs> Won't Marsh make a funny-looking redskin? <laughs> oh, Pa, why don't you like Marsh? Well, let's not get into that, June. Where is he? At home, as far as I know. He told me that as long as he had to be up most of the night last night and all night tonight, he'd nap till it was time to start out. Well, maybe if he'd do without so much sleep, he'd lose some of his lard. Paul. Oh, all right, all right. But I wish you'd think it over real careful before you say you'll marry him. Well, after all, maybe Marsh is right about this trip. Seems mighty odd to me that the Lone Ranger comes to you for help all of a sudden. What do you mean? Maybe he isn't the Lone Ranger. June, that's just fool talk. Well, maybe he's planning something. Maybe he's the robber that you've been hoping someday to catch. No such thing. I can judge men. It'd be mighty easy for him to rob someone like Jeb Calkins and Hank Gordon with you and the deputy out of town. That's enough. I know an honest eye when I see one. The masked man had it. What's more, I think Marsh ain't got it. Now finish that sewing. We start out in a little while. <laughs> darkest hour, a little before the first faint light of dawn, the sheriff, his deputy and daughter rode along the mountain trail with grumblings from the deputy, keeping pace with the hoofbeats. The more I think about it, the less I like it. This ain't no trick for a girl like June. We had that all out before, Marsh. Matter's closed. Oh, I like riding this way. If someone is laying in wait, how do we know they won't shoot us, counting on shooting the Lone Ranger? I think the whole thing's a put-up job to get us out of town. You may as well save your breath. We're almost to the gap. Well, just get this, Sheriff. Even if you are my boss, if anything happens to June, I'll not only kill the masked man, but you for getting us into this. Oh, Marsh, nothing will happen. Well, uh, hey, what the... Hey, I'm roped. Let oh. me out of this. Hey, this means jail for someone. There. There he is. I'll get him. No, you won't. This will hold you. The masked man. I told you he was a crook, and this proves it. Gag him, Tonto. I'll take care of the sheriff. Go ahead. And later, I'll take care of you. <laughs> Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Well, the Lone Ranger found the trail to his secret silver mine blocked by men whom he was sure were crooks. Returning to the last town, the masked man enlisted the aid of the sheriff, his deputy, and his daughter. As these rode toward the gap in the dead of night, they were roped and captured. Sheriff Pendleton, I brought you and your daughter here for a reason. Yes, Dag but you brought us here to capture us. And you'll pay. Uh, you keep quiet. Why, you... You Lord, keep... Uh, all right. All right, I'll shut up. You've had outlaws in Southpaw, and you can't catch them. I don't need your help for that. Maybe you'll have help, whether you want it or not. Now, you've got to stay right here with your daughter and deputy. I'm hanged if I will. You'll find a comfortable camp. It's the one we used. as a shelter for the girl. Ah, plenty good shelter, too. Dan, make it. I don't need special attention. You'll not be bound tightly, and perhaps you can work the ropes loose. If not, I'm sure you'll be comfortable here until we return. You wait. I'll get you if it's the last thing I do. (laughs) That would be interesting. Dan, bring up the horses. We're moving on. At the gap, two men sat in the darkness on watch while one slept. Darcy and Bates heard the beat of hoofs approaching, but chuckled in their satisfaction. (laughs) That's a good thing we got that tip off, Bates. If we hadn't, we'd be away laying those three and find we had the sheriff himself. Yeah. Good thing we learned what the scheme was. Uh, No use waking Harv. Leave him sleep. Sure. Uh, Can you see anything in the dark? Uh, I can make out the figures. That's about all. Three of them. The sheriff, Marsh, and the girl, huh? Yeah. (laughs) Dressed like the three we want. Ain't that good? Now, we're supposed to follow them and lose the ranger. Well, there they go. They're off our minds. Now we can grab the next ones that come along the trail. I told you this would be the place to wait, didn't I? That's what you did, Darcy. Hey, maybe it'd be a good idea to rouse Harve now. The old ranger will be along soon. Don't you think so? Oh, all right. Get him up. Harve. Harve, wake yeah. up. Get moving. Huh? <coughs> Get awake. The Lone Rangers do. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Lone Ranger. The sheriff just went past. Now the masked man will figure he's safe and coming through the gap. Yeah, that's so. Well, we got things to do. It's getting day, ain't it? Just starting. No light to see by. I got a score to settle with that redskin. Just let me have one good chance at him. That's all I want. Huh? He can hold a gun plumb to his head. And if the Lone Ranger don't tell what we want to know, he can let her rip. Uh, that'll be downright fun. If that don't start the masked man's tongue moving, we threaten the kid. <laughs> It didn't take the sheriff long to get the ropes off his wrists and untie Marsh and June. In a few moments, the three were in the saddle, riding after the Lone Ranger. I'm going with you, and that's all there is to it. Then stay back of me and Marsh. Yeah, keep back. There'll be a row when we overtake that crook. And it's my bet he'll circle and then head back to town. Rain up! Get him covered. Keep your hands out. Don't move or we drill you. Watch the kid. Beach, what are you doing here? Or have you doggone fool? Why... Why, it's Marsh and the sheriff. Hey, this ain't the kid. It's June Pendleton. Let go of my arm. <coughs> now, see here, you... What are you three loafers doing here? Marsh, this year calls for some accounting. You told us these three would go first. All right, keep your trap shut. Hold on. How is it you three let the Lone Ranger, whoever it was wearing that mask, go through? Why didn't you stop him? How'd you know we were coming? Sheriff, get your hands up. Marsh! Hmm? You heard me. Marsh is on our side, Sheriff. You bungled into something, and it's tough luck. We wouldn't hurt you if we didn't have to. Marsh, you, you with the... Might as well have the truth. June, I I mean to be rich. When a man's got money, it don't matter just how he got it. Oh, you beast. All this time you've well, been... Well, I meant what I said about wanting to marry That'll you, That'll do, you buzzard. Now it's clear as day. You're the one that's to blame for the robberies in town. You and these three... Get ropes on them, boys. Hold until I get now, back. Hey, how'd this happen? Why'd the Lone Ranger go first? He roped us and left us in his camp. Well, why he'd done that, I don't know. But hurry with those ropes and make them tight enough so the sheriff don't get loose again. I'm following that masked man's trail. And, Harv, you'll come with me. 
We want to know where that silver mine is. And we'll find it and know the reason why. Right. The vault. Quiet. Won't do no good to talk to you. Come on, Harv. Right. Get up there. Get along there. There. That'll hold you. You got the girl rope, Darcy? Yep. I suppose you snakes will shoot us. That's for the boss to decide. Well, you'd better. If you don't, it'll be your neck. We got nothing to say, Pendleton. You're right. What? Hey, wait Stand still. Bates, Darcy, make a move and I'll let you have it. Where'd you come from? Turn this way, Sheriff, and I'll cut that rope. Hey, Ginger, that this don't beat all. There. Take the knife and free your daughter. Dad, maybe he is the Lone Ranger. Sheriff, are you satisfied about the part your deputy played? I am. I think I cared for that poor cat. There you are, June. Now rub your wrists. Someone in town had to post these men to stop us. Your deputy was the only one beside yourself who knew where we were heading. So you let him know we were coming this way, riding in disguise, figuring he'd let the first three riders go through safe. I had to prove the point. And that's why you had to start out so late. You wanted to give him time to get here, talk to his men, and get back. We can go over the facts later. There isn't time now. What'd you do, ride past here and then circle back? Sure. Marsh and Harve are still free. They're trying to follow me. Well, who are they following? Toto and Dan. They won't notice that there are just two instead of three riders until it gets a little lighter. Then... Hey, Marsh. There ain't but two of them. Look. The red skin and the kid. Hey, where's the masked one? How do I know? Come on, we'll overtake him. No, 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 wait. Keep back. For what? Well, those two will lead us somewhere. And the chances are they'll take us right to the Lone Ranger. We can capture him whenever we want. Marsh, they're riding up to that shack on the side of the mountain. Yeah, it looks that way. They took us a nice roundabout route to get here. We could have got here in half the time, but coming direct after leaving the gap. Yeah, they've, they've stopped at the shack. Maybe we better stop here and go the rest of the way on foot. Yeah, yeah. Hold that. Get our guns ready, and then we Say, could... look. Why, that galoot... He's seen us, and he's coming on the run. Get ready to shoot. Who is he? How do I know? Hey, fellas, come on with me. Oh, thank goodness you come. You're needed bad. Hold on, who are you? It's the old man that needs you. Nobody'd help us. You're downright brave men to come here. What are you talking about? Most men ain't afeard of bullets or things they can see, but when they're getting a thing like the plague... What's that? Oh, it's all right. It ain't so awful, catching. I've been with the old man for days, and I'm all right. Just what ails the old man. Now, don't back out, mister. I got a couple of men there to help, but more needed. Maybe you could carry the old man to town where he'd get the right food. Get back. Don't touch me. He ain't backing out, are you? Let go of me. Is that why those two went to the shack? Just to help the old man? Oh, they ain't afeard, but they need help. Or Jiminy, we need help there in that shack. A lot of help. Do you mean to say the Lone Ranger went there because an old man was plagued? Uh, what about the silver mine? Shucks. Did you ever hear of silver being found around here? Uh, Harv, I'm getting away from here. I can fairly feel the germs of the plague jumping on me. Come on. Uh, get up there. Get up, get up. <laughs> Reckon I didn't tell a single fib. It's true enough that help is needed by John. <laughs> yep, John could use some help in putting four new shoes on silver. <laughs> You finish in no time, Silver. Brand new shoes for the finest horse that ever lived. <laughs> now, how you for that? <laughs> I still laugh at the way those two scooted when they thought that there was sickness that was catching. Now stop your laughing, Sam, and get the Lone Ranger's saddlebag filled with the silver shoes. John, did you make up a supply of extra shoes? Yep, all there together. Fine. Extra shoes? For what? There's another horse, Dan, that's going to wear silver shoes. <laughs> Scout? <laughs> oh, Scout not wear them. There, other horse. You'll see in a few days, Dan. Golly, this is the smithy that's been making silver shoes. Yeah, for a long time, Dan. A mighty long time. Now, steady, silver. You know, Dan, I like your style. I reckon you'll do if you listen to what the Lone Ranger says. You bet I'll listen. Yeah. Uh, what about Crook? By this time, the sheriff will have caught Marsh and Harve. Uh-huh, and that'd be plenty good. Now, Dan, look here. Yes, sir? Have that box to one side. 
hardly weighs anything. There's a trap door in the floor. Sure enough. Open it. All right. But there's a well here. A ladder going down. It isn't a well. It's the entrance to the mine. The Lone Ranger silver mine. That's it, Dan. When ore is needed for bullets and shoes, John mixes it with other metals to harden it. We take only as much as we need to carry on our work. But what about all that you don't take out? The natural resource, Dan, belongs to the country. Sometime in the future, there'll be more use for it than there is now. Oh. You keep it a secret so others won't come here? Yes, it's a secret, so we can keep up the work we do. You'll learn more about that in the future. Now, close the door. Yeah. Here, I'll shove the box back. Well, Sylvie's ready to go. Good. Come on, Toto. Uh-huh. Me ready. Me open door. Your saddlebag's filled. Thanks. Come on, Dan. Now we're heading for Mustang Mag. Now put the extra shoes in there. Well, good luck to you, lad, and good riding. Goodbye, John. We'll be back. And we'll be waiting. Steady, big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come on, boy. Well, Silver, boy! Yes, yes. I wonder what new adventures those three will go through before they wear out that supply of silver shoes and silver bullets. <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.